Sharon, primarily, if you could focus on uh, building up a uh, you know effective pitch deck. Mm -hmm. And I'm into growth phase okay. of my startup, and we are building more sustainable, eco-friendly products. So the mission is to capture each and every household Others? globally. Yeah. Hello, Sharad. Uh, myself, Bhamra Gulati, and my business is Great Bunch, and my business is in growth stage. And I want to know about the market, recent market for handicraft and eco-friendly product gifting articles also okay okay Hi, anyone Shaman. else uh, who has been trying to figure out yeah uh, this, this is neha uh, i'm uh, i'm from aviatron automation i think you already know us um from this jaipur so yeah <laughs> so we are in a growth stage so i would like to know more about the online program during the um, uh, lockdown period. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. And uh, we have Monica, Kanika, Dr. Sarika in this. I am sorry, I don't know the age of everyone, so I'm just keeping you calling you by the first name. Uh, but if you can let us know, let me know just very quickly that what you all want to be covered in this session, that would be really helpful. You could also talk about GTM go-to-market strategies and what kind of financial parameters, uh, you know, the startup founder really has to ponder over. Which, which are those main ratios and the main financial uh, aspects? Right. Okay. Okay, I think we have a fair bit of idea about what you uh, want to be covered in this session. And uh, I'm just sharing my presentation. I'll give you just that uh, what I'm going to be covering this session. On a brief note, uh, Arun has given the my introduction, al introduction already. And uh, I run this company called Tinkerly, which is in the education technology space. We, we help schools to set up STEM labs and uh, kids at home to uh, make learning easy and interesting via some interesting tools and also imparting some uh, skills that would be important in their future jobs. So uh, why we are learning today's go-to-market strategy? Why exactly in what all scenarios you need to come up with go-to-market strategy? This is a very interesting graph I found uh, on the internet. So I'm getting few messages. Okay. So this is this interesting graph. Now there are four, uh, four columns that you can see in this. One is that uh, uh, you are coming into a new market with the existing product or maybe with a new product. Second scenario is that, uh, so there are four scenarios comes in that. Same product, new market, same uh, new product, new market, and uh, same pro uh, new market, but the same product. So these are the th three scenarios where a product is developed or a same product you enter in the new market Maybe you are in the space of, uh, say, for example, Uber was earlier in US and they wanted to enter with uh, with that product in India. So they need to create a go to market strategy for India. Uh, similarly, if you come up with a new product development, so maybe um, Amazon is having its web services, they want to come up with an e-commerce version or they want to come up with an automation sales software.
हेलो हेलो हां आवाज नहीं आ रहा हमें तो कोई भी जस्ट अ मिनट यानी बबल कैन यू चेक इट शरद या देयर सम टेक्निकल इश्यूज जस्ट स्पोक टू शरद इज जस्ट जॉइनिंग इन अ मिनट यस ओके so while sharad joins back i mean there have been few suggestion there are few suggestions around pitch deck preparation and financials and other th- aspects so uh, we have uh, top uh, sessions plan on these topics specifically so in the next session next week we'll be talking about uh, business process improvement your financials numbers everything as also we have another session that uh, Uh, that will be focusing on investor pitch, pitch deck preparation, all the aspects. So today's session, let's focus more on market and marketing. Probably we can talk about these specific topics today. I think Sharad just joined back. Yeah, I am here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Please, Babal, can you? Yeah. Okay. I am sharing the screen again. So we will be uh, covering the four four parts in this project today's presentation. first we'll be starting with the customer definition that how we define a customer who can be a customer then there will be coming out to the go to market strategy so go to market strategy would be including the product strategy as well as the promotional strategy and then we will be coming up that how you can integrate this and and how do you launch it which includes the goal setting tracking ratios and the financials you come up with so very briefly i will be taking it into the three steps so customer you define your customer since you all are most most of you are at the growth stage you might be having some picture of your customer in mind but you yourself might be having that picture how do you communicate that within the entire organization within your co-founders within your uh, partners and how it remains exactly same is why you need to define the persona very clearly and when you define the customer persona you come up you define their profile so which includes all demographics income locations how what their professions are the another most important part is that why this type of customer would be willing to buy a product so that understanding is very important about that customer persona so you can mention a few of those features and even more importantly this is more important that why that particular type of customer would be preferring your product over that competitor so these two answers when we have whenever we create a marketing plans in digital as well as offline it is important for an example i have taken a smaller case of fitbit devices so see if you can see the blog here they have created that uh, a person who has a desk job and that's why he might be looking for a fitness uh, thing on sufficiently they have a definition for that he loves to do for workouts he is a 34 lives in us so similarly they have their own definition that that particular type of market what uh, uh, requirements how would you define that particular customer persona this is very helpful in the next steps when you come up with creating up uh, campaigns and uh, other steps that would be really important now when you have your customer this is mostly we think that uh, most of the startup accelerator and incubators are using uh, this particular type of customer interviews in the incubation stage but it is not limited to the incubation stage while the process could be more faster in using the technology so when you ask the question it is very important that you are, are actually not being influenced by the superficial answers the customer is giving because customer even don't know what kind of uh, questions and what kind of responses or what kind of features they would be actually looking into so this is important let me take a case a very simple situation so for example if i am creating an application which helps people to uh, people who usually get late and helps them to be more punctual so if i, I go to uh, ask a particular customer persona and i go to them that uh, uh, their perception if i don't want, if i want to know how can i ask that so first these five questions we i have found uh, uh, very useful whenever we talk to a customer that is one is that you start by asking that 
tell me about the the story that last time you got late the customer might say uh, i was going to yesterday i was going to the meeting and then some uh, my tire puncture happened in my taxi and that happened okay so what was the hardest part about being late yeah i got late and that's why the boss was uh, not uh, happy with me and i set a bad impression but why was that hard why being late was hard so this is a kind of you might feel that this is a repeated question but no this is the more deeper you want to know that why being late was hard that was the hardest moment was that your boss was asking question but why was that hard the next step comes is okay so how did you manage that how did you actually manage to reach your office then so you'll say i i booked uh, another uh, device and uh, i now in future i'm making sure that i keep my calendar set and then uh, i go on time in office and i keep a margin so how that is how i'm planning to solve it right now but do you think that is the most awesome uh, thing that you can do actually if you find anything which is not awesome uh in this solution by setting up calendar for every day or getting a notification or an alarm would you be tell me what is the what is the thing that is not awesome about the solution that you are thinking about then you ask them again why so the it's a fundamental principle is that when you are meeting a customer if you can ask them three times at least that why 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 you will get the actual answer which you will be uh, interested to hear and that would be the most important so one fundamental rule in this is that uh, which could be really helpful for you is whenever you meet a person and you are talking to them about a new market or a new product don't talk about would you be interested into a product that an application that will help you be on time or will you be subscribing to an app with, that will be helping you to never get late no no time never you should ask a question uh, which is on the future aspect you must be asking question which is based on the customers present and the past have you been able struggling with the getting late or uh, do you think you need a application that will help you in time so being in present and past is something the customer would be more truthful and more reasonable answers they would be giving but if you ask about future even they don't know what they want so that is the fundamental thing uh, we should be taking care uh, in terms of uh, doing and one more important advice is that just don't go on the answers of the surveys and that is the very important part a very interesting tactic i got to know is that uh, giving some prototypes so we call it a do a dry test so you are doing a prototype that you have you even with before creating the actual product you can just simply create a simple landing page and ask customer to pay say 2500 rupees for this particular product the customer if he is all at all liking it but might not be interested to pay for it you can do these kind of test where you have to pay and when they click on the payment button the pop up comes sorry it was just a test and thank you so much for helping us into realizing that you are really interested in this product so once the customer actually hits the on the button to pay that means that they are actually going to pay what they are liking so this is the uh, how we define the customer now this is a very interesting saying by henry ford that if he would have asked what they want if he would have asked people that what they wanted at that moment they would have said that the faster horses because they just knew horses they were not knowing cars so the answers customer might not know you need to identify the problems for those from those customers now the next question comes is that these problems are how important these problems are and how reasonable they are and how urgent they are and that is where the very famous uh, example comes is the is this a problem which is a painkiller or a vitamin so when you go to a uh, chemist shop uh, whenever you want a painkiller you would be in a very super urgency you would want it anyhow and uh, this is a need to have a medicine that you should keep in home but vitamins are are a nice to have you might have it you should use it you might you might not want it to use but actually you should use and that is the kind of product which come in this category so there are few examples like uber netflix paytm google maps before if you think you might say that even before uber the life was going even before netflix the life was going then how would you call netflix as a painkiller so someone would like to tell here that what do you, why do you think netflix is a painkiller or a vitamin solution based on this table which i have shown here 
would anyone would like to share that what why do they think that netflix is a painkiller solution not a vitamin solution or they think it's a vitamin one would you like to add your points and we can keep few interactions in between that would be great bhavna yeah so you say it pain killer yeah uh, yeah of course uh, so would you like to specify why pain killer kyunki is period ke andar jitna zyada tension hai ki aap netflix pe thoda time spend karke apni tension release kar sakte ho covid ke regarding right exactly true yeah that has created the even the pain has large the size of pain has increased that situation so anyone else has some other points to add here khyati so would you like to explain why painkiller do you think in a non covid situation also uh, hi this is khyati yeah hmm. so i also believe that netflix is uh, not a vitamin because it's like you know in the current scenario we are using it it's not a very essential kind of a commodity or something which we need to have it's just something which we have that's why we are using it something like Hmm. Right, and uh, Nuska has also Nuska Kitchen. Someone from Nuska Kitchen has also written uh, that uh, it is also giving you independence of choosing what to watch. Right, exactly. So that was the problem I was not knowing earlier. I was not interested into watching DVDs. I was not interested into exploring and searching for the huge set of libraries of the content. Uh, but now, so independence. on the tv you had to wait that 8 pm this movie will come on sunday you had to wait for that but now, now you don't have to do that so these are the the pains that the netflix is able to solve and if you don't call that's a definition before painkiller and vitamin is that it's not about that the life was not going without this solution no it is the product that you want to use it is not that you should use so that is a very fundamental difference between uh, these and uh, all products don't have to be in the beginning but you can when every problem is solving multiple every product is solving multiple types of problem when you are generating your marketing communications when you are communication uh, when you are thinking about communication in terms of your uh, go to market strategy you need to focus on that particular problem which seems more on the want to use side while there could be other solutions your product might be doing which might not be your uh, painkiller problem solvers but this particular type uh, so you need to identify that particular feature of your product or your product and offerings that would be sounding like a uh uh feature which will be actually a uh, want to use nidhi i think uh, completely agree with you that you are thinking that to uh, it you think it's a vitamin because you are not addicted so that's what i'm trying to uh, push here because you might not be in their target customer so their target customer doesn't define that the entire population is the netflix tg they have a target customer defined but the target customer which they have and they are not expecting them to be addicted they are just expecting them to be wanting to use netflix and subscribing to that and even if i am using netflix i would not call myself as an addict but i like to use it i want to use it that is how it defines that it is solving a problem and the vitamin could have been that uh, uh, a particular serial so for example government is planning to start uh, classes school classes on tv so i might not be willing to be willing to use that that is what we should be using that so they are the vitamins in comparison to the painkillers that we talk the next part comes is that when you have realized that what is your actual pain points then comes is that you define your product market fit so on the right side you can see the value matrix in the left side uh, uh, you have that product market fit so you need to see that you define that particular pain there could be a lot of pains your product is solving but define a single pain that is the most urgent the size of that pain is large like you uh, like we mentioned that uh, size of the pain increased for products in e learning e entertainment everything digital in this covid situation so when you creating a solution the size should be large and then there should be a willingness to pay while we have seen the willingness has decreased in current days but you need to see the products and you need to prefer products where there is a willingness 
and then of course it should be an ease of reach the first people who are going to use they should be easily reachable that is also a factor so there is a, a method of choosing your product uh, then which types of people you focus in your marketing campaigns you can use a methodology called spa spa so that means you identify what is the size of the particular type of people then what is the payability of that particular type of people and then what is the reachability of that particular type of people so in the case of fitbit there could be college students using it there could be techies using it uh, there could be uh, housewives using it so there could be different types of people who are coming under their customer definition who would be using it but when the fitbit is fitbit is defining their marketing strategy they need to identify which one to focus first and that will be helping them then the value metric says that when you have these pain point defined so the, your target customer is not just the user there are influencers there are decision makers there are payers who pay on your behalf so there always might not be the case then the user like in the education uh, startups neha can relate uh, the user is student or the teacher but the different the purchaser is the principal or the management of the school so these could be different and everyone's pain points are different we need to understand individual stakeholders pain point and then what is my product giving value to that particular pain point and my marketing communication should be giving a message which is really simple for solving that solving that problem so here is the example of sales automation product where there is a user and there is a manager they have different pain points uh, my product has features which is covering both pain points but the message i am giving to the user is that stop wasting selling time in crm with sales ai so you are a sales person stop wasting your selling time in just simple crm things uh, with the sales ai product that we are giving you the manager which i am communicating is that clean up your messy customer data with sales automation so since you will be using my sales automation pro product you will not have to just uh, you can just simply clean up that all messy data your teams are providing to you so you can get that uh, um, automation tool be used so that message is important how we provide that message understanding with clear understanding of pain and the value proposition then comes is the uh, research and the testing mechanism so we might have a gut feeling that says that this is the problem which is large enough and then that we should be solving it and this is how we should market but it should be having a scientific approach of using this process so what helps is that you need to assume a few things but then you do continuously experimentation and you based on the experimentation outcome you come up with that uh, reiterations again and again uh, bhavna you can mute yourself in okay. case yeah so uh, this is the right side you means what graph you are seeing is the cano model that's called cano model and uh, what is important the goal of this cano model cano model is important is to understand that what features are basic necessities that the product must fulfill so which all the features which has to be must when you are defining your product strategy this is important second is what features are value addition so you can have a balance between the must have features and the value addition features and somewhere in the balance you need to Uh, keep it so for example when you have created a product and you have created an application of uber so it might ask the users that uh, would you be wanting that it comes to your location would you be willing to pay from your paytm or your credit card or would you want it to be using a business account and your personal account separate or would you be wanting the self support mechanism to be automated or some manual support these could be all various features of that application and would you be wanting the app, um, cab nearest associated to you so based on these you can identify and you ask these features so when you say so we have introduced the feature that you can use a business account and your personal account in the uber application now the customers can some customers will say i think this is the most important thing i required in your application and now it is something it's useful it has to be in this application some of them okay it is good to have i am um, it is a uh, it's good solution in my case it would be now a little bit more helpful but anyway i was using it so this is a difference between the uh, having the solutions which are value additions or having the features that are only that is the must have 
and that helps in your defining your product uh, uh, strategy before you come to the marketing and promotional strategy so we come to the promotion strategy now once you have your uh, uh, product strategy ready we come to the promotional strategy the promotional strategy starts with the competitive analysis now on the right side of this table i have told you uh, the few of the important uh, factors that we should be doing research about our competitors like you would you expect uh, many of you might have seen mahabharata in this uh, lockdown would you be expecting uh, kauravas or pandavas to be going in the battlefield without even knowing what is in the opposite side what are their strengths what are their weaknesses and in the war which we are entering what are the strengths and weaknesses of the opposition would you be entering a battle like that no so would if you would not be entering a battle without knowing the opposition how could you enter in a market without knowing your competitor you cannot so this is a very important requirement that you should do in very um, robust way in a very exhaustive way that you need to know what products the competitors are giving what are the benefits they are so giving to the user so benefits term i used that it is not just the features you need to talk about you need to understand because uh, yesterday i was talking to someone and he was say that he was saying the customers don't purchase features they purchase benefits features could be different to deliver those benefits so if i am purchasing an application of fitness i am i am purchasing to be fit i am not purchasing that this is a a uh, fancy band that i would be using and i can see some my pulse rate etc but i am purchasing for the benefit that i am going to expect from this and uh, the second third thing comes is the market share so already the customer is how much market they have captured what is the scope available how much saturated it is and how the market can be captured from there then the communication that what kind of branding and marketing communication my customer my competitors are using and how good they are and how improvised we can do from there marketing strategies even in the past and the present so if you know both the past and present you would be able to understand that how they have been evolving and you would be not repeating the same mistakes again and then six point comes is the pricing and the target customer that whom they are targeting and some history about that uh, competitor that what kind of appetites they have what kind of support they have until what extent they can go in the competition when you directly compete uh, with them so when you know all these seven parameters of a competitor you would be in a very good situation to say that our product x provides y benefits to our target customer through z unique features and when you call unique you would be confident because you know your competitors that what all features they are giving so this is a very important time uh, very important factor of before creating any marketing plan in any of the industry whether you are in health whether you are in it you are in education in whichever industry in in handicrafts you need to know your competitors very well so most of the time the startups comes in pitches and say ki i am doing this very very unique and no competitor i am able to see in the uh, in the market currently investors don't want to see a market where you are uh, having the only sole and sole purpose your product should be innovative your your benefits should be innovative and your unique feature should be there to provide those benefits you should not be the only sole player in the market because then that scenario your awareness cost is going to be super expensive that is going to be very very high so we know this competitors well it helps us at a various stages once you know that the next part comes is your product pricing so you know competitors pricing you know uh, what customer is already paying for this particular product now you know your product's economy is also that how much it you it requires to product produce your product or produce your services and both based on on the
हेलो 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 बोल आई थिंक देयर इज अनदर अगेन इशू या या ही इज जॉइनिंग इन अ जस्ट अ मिनट Hi Sharad, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hi Babal. So okay. I am really sorry. I think my network is playing with me. So uh, we were talking about different types of pricing: uh, premium pricing, initial low pricing. There is a pricing called constant low. So there are players who want to retain their prices least in the market, and they play on the pricing only. Can you give some examples of these kind of pricing? Anyone? who oh, which companies are using this constant low pricing models would you like to give some examples of constant low i am not able to hear anyone am i audible in terms of offer could it be flipkart and amazon in terms of giving offers mm -hmm. right so this is occasional low pricings and can you come up with these some examples amazon yeah any other examples think around matlab like when you start thinking like this you become marketer when instantly ideas like these comes in your mind you You can call yourself. You are a marketing now. If you talk okay. about, uh, uh, yeah, my audible. Yes, yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Hello. Uh, Kathy, I am not able to hear you. Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, if you talk about uh, some you know organization or some company which keeps the price low always, like at constant pace, I would say Groupers. Hmm. Right. If you talk about grocery segment. Right. Yeah, Groupers is a very good example on that. Yeah. yeah. So they have created uh, Geo. Yes, very good example, Geo. So these are players who are playing. G Geo is the wonderful example in this situation for keeping the constant low, and uh, Grofers is also a wonderful example. So these are the companies who have optimized their operations in a way that supply chains in a way that they have been keeping low, and they are going for the economies of masses. Another example is the uh, uh, Walmart also doing it on the worldwide level. some companies are on the price skimming model where they come up and launch the product at a higher price and then continuously decrease mostly in electronics product then there are some companies who are coming up with psychological pricing like not charging 200 rupees but charging 195 196 so that just you can create that uh, psychological factor you might have seen in most of the sale times and uh, then there are bundle pricings which usually go in fmcg products where uh, you purchase this and that and then together you will be purchasing it you will be paying it at lesser cost so the bundle perceived value to the customer is high and the cost to the company is less, lesser so these kind of pricing they use but the most important part is how do you decide which pricing works and which pricing doesn't work so for that you do a lot of testing you do a testing how you can do it there in the social media on your the existing channel so there could be different types of channels you might be using uh, that comes up from the behavior or of customer 
so if your customer is a techie who uses social media quite often and then also goes to the e-commerce platforms to get their groceries or to their they shop fashion also on the clothes also on e-commerce so depending on the behavior of your target customer you choose your channel and it should also be related that your channels are fit for your types of product don't just go on any channel which where your customer is coming you need to also see that your product fitting in that channel's requirement now when you are choosing your channels right uh, there are various channels could be some paid channels which include say display advertisements uh, uh, search advertisements uh, email marketing sales marketing sales methodologies and their channel partners distributors and there could be some channels which are owned channels so where uh, you have your own mechanisms of uh, say people who are your already subscribers you are sending them they are using your application you are sending them push notifications uh, email newsletters social media followers they are the owned channels so when you know these channels of marketing uh, you would be able to uh do justice with the right set of pricing by doing ab testings so you do a lot of testings while it is not fair that you charge differently from distant customers but initially you can market it like that and you can then later when someone has paid you the differential amount you could be uh different refunding the amount back to them but for your purpose you will be able to test it just for an example there are few sites which are on the crowdfunding sites and uh, you can simply use even before creating the product you can do the pre order campaigns and on the pre order campaigns you can validate and test a lot of pricings so these kind of uh, uh, pricing should come always after thorough testing so you cannot say right what is the right pricing pricing is a very complicated uh, subject in marketing but when you test a lot and uh, and when you know the market pricing customer is paying what your economies of cost and model and then what you should be actually pricing dip comes from the various testing and users perceivings so once you have then the uh, once you have the channels the the right communications you come up with the marketing strategy which is a five stage process one is the value proposition we talked about uh, value matrices where from where you come up with the value proposition then you come up with the position statement and uh, we mentioned about the position statement when you know the unique offering you, when you can understand the uh, proper proper uh, statement that the customer should be getting the messaging which is important the use case scenarios so sometimes it is very useful when you can few uh, share some use case scenarios uh, with the, your prospect customers that how you should be using and it is also important for your purpose when you define your marketing funnels you will know at what stage what kind of tool to be used and then fourth stage comes is the telling stories so you might be or your teammates could be chief marketing officers you can also call them chief storytellers and these storytellers are actually one who are creating the perfect messaging which can generate a great demand and awareness among your target customer why it is also important for you to because we are talking about marketing strategy here in some products marketing strategies works in some products sales strategies works it depends again on your customer behavior that the customer wants to interact with a field sales person with a calling inside sales person or your customer is more interested that you create your brand create some awareness create a pull and the customer takes the decision on his own or maybe the customer is someone who wants a sales person to define the entire use case and the value proposition on a one to one call or in a one to one meeting so selling strategy and marketing strategies go in parallel sometimes together and based on that we should be using that in every process you might be feeling that customer understanding is very important so uh, we can use various marketing platforms for after once we have all these events print etc so these are the uh, factors that you use now uh, i'm coming to the last part of my presentation which is the integration we you have your product strategy ready you have your uh, my promotional strategy ready how do you integrate there are three most important aspects that you should be ready with before you are launching your marketing campaign first you have a very good understanding in the of the problem statement of the customer second you are knowing you are knowing your customer behaviors thoroughly you are not just having a superficial understanding of the customer behavior but you actually know them and you have done a very deep research about that 
and the third is when your teams are ready so so marketing and your go to market strategy is something like your overall company where it's not just the job of sales and marketing team or it's not just the job of your uh, product team it is the time when you can give the opportunity to your cross function uh, to your product team your sales team your marketing team and bringing them together as a cross functional team combinations and giving every one of them the opportunity to learn this learning will help them in the further course of action in the marketing plans that they create and when you launch that every marketing plan should have a goal so i'll take you the example of uh, through the tinkerly's example uh, this is a monthly meeting slide i captured one slide from our may month meeting so this is the how we start any presentation the goal of this is that generate x number of leads uh, y number of uh, b2c product inquiries uh, jared number of app downloads then there are some subjective features like uh, the awareness of the brand and then maybe some response plan to the covid and some sentimental communication that we need to communicate via covid so these are the goal settings for every goal there should be a numeric outcome in terms of percentages in terms of uh, actual numbers that should be there before bringing and coming up with an actual goal now i found a very interesting presentation of fitbit again i will take that example uh this is important for you to understand that when you set up your goal you would be able to track those goals in your marketing campaign so i as i was saying there are owned campaigns and paid campaigns so there are multiple funnels there are three stages of a marketing plan funnel one is this the top funnel uh, then the bottom funnel and then the lower funnel so top funnels are like the cases of uh, when you give the first awareness to the customer they get your awareness from display ads or emails then they come up to your bottom funnel bottom funnel funnel is somewhere they ask for demo they ask for meeting uh, they they explore your website or they come your landing page that is the uh, middle funnel then the lower funnel is where uh, you are actually giving them a free trial and then later on after these three funnels the customer is paying you something so a lot of companies actually have been losing a lot of payable customers from that funnel and there are leakages but if you are planning your research well about the customer and on your channels if you have been doing choosing your channels your communications your messages your pricing your uh, uh, problem and value proposition if all those are not just your guts but the data then is the situation when you would be actually saving entire funnel converting into the actual statement and then there are some own channels which i mentioned you now the ratios which comes is that at every funnel from top funnel to middle funnel middle funnel to bottom funnel you will see ratios that x percentage of people who are seeing my ad advertisement are coming on my landing page and then out of those landing page y percentage of people are actually asking for a free trial and then after the free trial users then z percentage of people are actually subscribing for the paid users it could be variable it could be different in different industries and different products but once you have these funnels and you have some ratios regarding like uh, what would be the paybacks of that uh, customer what will be the customer lifetime value in the first customer would be you create your marketing plan and that plan includes the marketing projections so like in the case of fitbit when they calculated their uh, cost they came up with the outcome that overall for the next 3 years they would be requiring a marketing budget of 25 million dollar and that would be able to generate a revenue of 100 and uh, 180 something uh, 180 uh, dollars of revenue in the upcoming it would look like the entire marketing is turning into the Uh, revenue so entire revenue is going into the marketing cost but later on you would be seeing that this customers having some lifetime value they are a repeated users and that is how in the future years you will be getting the outcome of this uh, entire uh, proposition so this is a very important scenario that you know your ratios and these ratios comes after the entire understanding when you start applying your launching your plan so it is very important that you set your goals you track your uh, numbers and you compare them with your goals and once you compare them you take corrective actions on a real time basis that is the approach a startup is expected to follow 
so we talked about uh, uh, different types of customer discovery in whichever industry you are uh, that is relevant to you then we come up with the uh, second step of product strategy once you have defined your product your problem statement your value proposition you come up with the promotional strategy choosing the right channels and right pricing and once you have done that you start to uh, making your goals and based on those goals you launch your campaigns and you start tracking them so this is the part where i would like to emphasize it has been my personal learning but that in the beginning stages of the startups we don't have our matrices ready and when we don't have matrices ready if i ask you a simple thing you want to spend your time and money a lot of time and money what would you do you would do a marketing without tracking it so that is the simple uh, scenario where uh, if you are not tracking your marketing exercises you are just spending your time and money on to something that may or may not deliver results so this is very important that we come to this stage uh, that is how i would like to conclude my presentation and we can take up questions am i expertise into education sector but i can take questions regarding the the processes and the steps and if you have any doubts in terms of different parts of this uh, uh, i can take up these questions thank you thank you so much i am seeing the chat what is the ideal strategy yeah so you might not be having your direct competition you might be having your indirect competition so always whenever you coming up with a product it cannot be a situation that the competition is not there they might not be solving the way you are solving they might but they would have been solving the problem that is the first thing that is the most important thing if there is a problem that you are solving which is even not being solved in an alternative way that would be a complex situation that would be a really hard time that you might face but then uh, assuming that you have a indirect competition uh, your ideal strategy should be to do a limited level testing so once you do a testing so there is a term called dry testing dry testing is somewhere where you are doing your marketing campaigns on a limited geography on a limited sectors so that you are spending limited amount for example if you are uh, doing marketing in the jaipur city the marketing campaign could include your digital marketing your offline interventions your uh, personal networks there's those all going together and you will basis you will define your ratios that how many people are able to know about your company then uh, are they actually coming to uh, some they are just saying because when you are going to research they might say that this is a really good product but are they actually coming to your site and stand, starting to pay something and once they pay how much they are retaining so how much they are retaining then how much they are referring so this is an entire funnel if you want to start your marketing campaign do it in the smallest of the packet that you can do so that you will optimize your all these steps and then you can replicate in the all cities so like in the case of fitbit uh they did a very simple uh basic exercise and then they said that now if you give me 25 million dollar i'd be able to create 150 million 180 million dollar so this is how you need to start the first thing starts with the talking to customers don't believe in surveys don't believe in just simple questions and answers on simple calls customer interviews are best when you are one to one when you can see the face when you can see the expression and uh, when you can actually realize the real thing which is going here which is not going here so when you can realize that what is here in the customer's mind not what he is telling or what he is expressing that is the situation when you will be able to uh, way communicate that uh, marketing plan i think uh, i have been able to answer this any other questions you can also directly ask uh, if you want to like you can unmute and you can ask question yeah hi sharad this is surbi here i would like to know a go to market strategy for b2b e-commerce platform some uh, on par with alibaba how could we market and uh, if the design is the only constant wherein i couldn't use social media to upload my products wherein i have the mm. uh, design patent or the impanelment done with my designers mm. 
something okay. if you could throw light on so this would be coming in the situation that uh, your target customers are the decision makers in the b2b segment so uh, once we know the target customer they have a different types of needs uh, the needs of those tg we need to understand available so i'll take you a one simple example uh, there are companies who are providing sales automation software one are mean to be uh, for the larger businesses and one are mean to be the small sector enterprises both have different needs and different level of customizations so whenever even if you have a product that you are selling to b2b e-commerce customers you need to identify even uh, you, you need to narrow down even there first thing is that second is second step is that usually b2 in the b2b situations uh, it requires sales strategies also in addition to the marketing strategy why because uh, these managers have to convince their next uh, senior hierarchy members and when there is some level of sales engagement it could be digital it could be field sales also when you are able to communicate that to them you your objective should be that this person either he is a decision maker whom you are meeting or if he is not a decision maker he is able to convince his superiors that they need this product so uh, requirements and uh, psychology of a b2b customer is quite different than when we sell it to the uh, b2c customer and uh, also in my personal experience in the case of b2b i can uh, you should not you should be uh, from the beginning and your scalability should be able to suffice that requirement i was not able to understand your component about uh, the uh, designed uh, ip that you were talking about what is the role in that so i was just trying to say that we couldn't use we are not able to use social media for our promotional mm -hmm. uh, of the i think uh, even in b2b yeah. case i think social media is not a very good ideal way of doing that little bit of linkedin could be useful but email marketing are the best in that situation Yeah. and use the right okay. timing so for example if my work hours start at 9:30 if your email drops in the inbox at 9:15 that works best instead of you you sending email at 8 pm in the evening and by the time someone opens up his laptop he would be seeing it is the 10th rank so that is also you need to uh, think things in mind this is a simple example thank you Mm, any other questions we have okay i have a very small set of questions for everyone um, i am just to share stopping to share this i would like to finish it here and uh, i would be writing i would be calling one statement and uh, all you just need to do is that to, you need to raise your hand so you click on the participants when you click on the participants you can raise your hand so i just want to know i'll be telling one statement and you can say yes you can raise your hand and say yes or you can say uh, no by not raising your hand so i will be speaking a few statements uh, how many of you are not afraid of trying something new and crazy any raise hands you are not afraid of how many of you are not afraid of trying something new something something you have never tried okay four you can uh, now you can lower it down and i will ask uh, the different statement yeah there is a low hand also option okay how many of you have the testing mindset for example if you cook something how many of you have a testing mindset if you are uh, uh, if you are doing a webinar how many of you are testing something that the audio and voice is clear or not so in whatever you do how many of you have a mindset of testing things whenever you do something khyati anuskha dr sarika neha monika bhavna so comparatively more number of people are saying yeah almost almost 50% 60% of the group is saying that they have a testing mindset okay you can you can lower down your hands now i have a third statement 
how many of you have a always keenness to learn new skills some skills you might be knowing some skills you might not be knowing so how many of you always are willing to learn new skills these skills could be constraints also for example you might not be using the knowing the uses of how to use the macbook but if you are willing to learn macbook so do you have that in you great okay next points i have two more points to ask okay how many of you assume that you are an early adopter when you purchase something when you use something how many of you you consider yourself as an early adopter you know early adopter those who whenever a new technology new product comes in you, those are the people who just want to watch, uh, use it first when if you are having an interest of movie you want to show the first show first day so how many of you think you are early adopter when a new technology comes you want to try that feature that maybe there is a feature of polls in this i want to try this feature so only three of you two of you i think now i can see three in the early adopters okay we have four now we have four early adopters now in this okay we have a lot of testing mindset people we have limited early adopters okay so last one how many of you value your guts over your uh, data when you take a decision how many of you value guts over data guts over data there are sometimes confusion that the gut says that this and the data says something else how would you decide would you be hearing how many of you would hear guts over data i have a lot of people i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 around 9 people are there nine and the remaining are uh, i hope because yeah i can see they were responding earlier so they are actually the ones who prefer data over this so i ask this question differently uh, so these five statements that i asked they are the except the last one so they are the traits of a good marketer so when you are actually an early adopter you are a good marketer when you have been trying new and new crazy ideas new things because what the competition is doing if you are doing the same things you will be getting the same outcomes you would not be performing better so if you have a mindset of trying new things you are a marketer if you have a mindset of testing things you are a good and decent marketer you are saving a lot of time and cost for your company when you are always always open to learn new skills like you are doing today you are a marketer because you will be applying this in your company and your respective jobs and your products when you have been an early adopter you would be actually willing to use new and new technologies for example yesterday few days ago i want to i got to know that you can now do presentations in the instagram live so that feature was uh, recently launched by instagram and by you if you would have been knowing that you would be able to use that maybe if your product suits that so there are a lot of early adopter things which come in the market and good marketers use it before anyone else and the final one i just uh, twisted the question usually the trend says that good marketers are the ones who follow data over guts while it is always an instinct in the business we say that the gut should be follow should be above the data but uh, in the marketing when you follow data over guts you would be following the voice of mass than not just yourself so these are the five basic statement i i heard from a few people that uh, they are the ones usual traits of the good marketers across the world so thank you so much i hope uh, i have been able to add uh, some value to all of you and uh, this would be uh, providing some uh, benefits in your companies in the times to come thank you so much uh, everyone for joining the call thank you so much uh, Bhav, uh, bhaval for helping me uh, hey, create this call and uh, arun for thank you so much for inviting me thank you so much sharad it was a pleasure having you thank you everyone for being a part of this session we will have in more interesting sessions soon we'll update you about the same just a request if you could just share your feedback um, you know over um, over uh, with me on whatsapp that would be great thank you so much thank yeah. you sharad a lot sharad aap instagram ke 
हेलो शरद आप इंस्टाग्राम के लिए क्या बोल रहे थे भी क्या नया मार्केटिंग स्ट्रेटेजी इंस्टा ने पोस्ट किया है यस यस सो इंस्टाग्राम में एक्चुअली इंस्टाग्राम लाइव आपने देखे होंगे इंस्टाग्राम लाइव में यूजली हम फेस टू फेस बात करते हैं बट अगर आपको कुछ स्लाइड शोज दिखाने होते हैं उसके अंदर सो यू कैन एक्चुअली सेट अप एंड सेव सम इमेजेस इन विच यू कैन राइट योर टेक्स्ट यू कैन सेव दम सेपरेटली एंड ड्यूरिंग लाइव यू कैन यूज यू इमेजेस टू बी शोइंग अलॉन्ग साइड योर फेस सो इफ यू यूज इट वेल यू कैन एक्चुअली क्रिएट अ स्लाइड शो एक्सपीरियंस दे सो uh like on the closing note uh, i would like to we mentioned about testing and uh, testing means that i would also be willing to test that how was the session of mine today so that i can improvise in future whenever i get a chance to speak to fellow entrepreneurs so your feedbacks would be really a very good test for me and thank you so much and i would also uh, be very much open to uh, alongside the good feedbacks like always customers do if you can also share some feedbacks on the scope of improvisation that would also be great thank you so much everyone Thank you Sharad thank you everyone Thanks Sharad thanks everyone thanks Paul Thank you